Hi, how are you? Welcome to tonight's um, Facebook Live. We are going to do number four in the series of Love is the Drug, okay? So this is about sugar, addictions, uh, and love. And we're going to be looking at how to... Um, you know, uh, you discover addictions. We're going to go through the seven different ways or t ways that addictions get held inside the body. Um, we're going to be looking at how we can unlock addictions uh, and return you to, to love as a stable force inside. Um, we're just going to also return your life back to normality as well because after we've had addictions for a very long time, it can really change our lives. So who are you beyond your addictions um, and all that kind of jazz. So you may have an addiction. You may know someone with an addiction. You may be a practitioner who wants to help other people with addictions uh, it's a really really big topic um, so yeah let's dive into it okay so uh, addictions addictions is a really 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 big topic and we have all sorts of addictions you can have addictions to cigarettes you could have addictions to food uh, you could have addictions to drugs alcohol uh, pornography I knew someone who used to have an addiction to baked beans he had to have a can of baked beans at every single meal um, so yeah let's kind of you know delve into it addictions are really interesting things because they keep us kind of uh, trapped in time when, when the addiction began um, it kind of will stunt you it will stunt you emotionally it will stunt you mentally it will stunt you spiritually and it's kind of like every every addiction will keep you trapped in time and the reasons why um, you know addictions form are so 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 different so tonight I'm gonna go through the seven different types or the seven different ways that you can um, you know get an addiction and of course you know addictions are complex so you, you there might be many more reasons why addictions uh, form but we'll just be going over seven tonight um, and you know I think it's really interesting that you know first of all we have to rec recognize that addictions form for many reasons and the way that an individual will solve their own addiction problem is also very individual to the person um, unless it's extreme addiction where um, it's become an absolute physical addiction um, and then you're gonna have to take really extreme measures like going in for, for treatment uh, and and severe detoxing and things like that um, but otherwise in a nutshell I think everyone has their own path to clear up their addiction and we have to kind of unlock the reasons why the addiction began in the first place um, some of us have come out of addictions which is amazing you know I know so many people that have come out of alcohol addictions heroin addictions um, you know all sorts of cigarette addictions smoking so if you've had if you have an addiction and you feel like sharing it great or if you've had an addiction and you've come out of it um, it'd be really good to kind of um, you know see what's going on you know sugar is addiction I know someone that was addicted to white bread they just used to eat a, a loaf or two of white bread a day so um, tea tea is a big addiction coffee can be a really big addiction so what have we got going on here Lynn sugar Sylvia alcohol sugar uh, Sylviana sugar sugar lots of sugar then hey <laughs> What else? Coffee with Jay. Um, Oscar Weed. Yeah, Weed's a really big one. Weed's a really big one. Coffee, Lydia. Uh, sugar, we've got. Yeah, so, so addictions are really, really huge. Jolly Instagram. Interesting addiction. Yes, we can have social media addiction. Um, and tobacco. Okay. Alrighty, so all sorts of different things going on here. So um, let's go through addiction. Let's try and unlock addiction um, so that we can understand it. Um, because when we start to unlock it, we start to have more power over it. It's when we have, um, when we are consumed by our own addiction, um, we can, we we might have thoughts that say, hey, let's do something else, but the, the addiction takes over. And so what I wanna try and get out of tonight for you is that we get enough space between you and your addiction, okay? So we've also had addiction to bad uh, partners, attention, bread, Coca-Cola, cigarettes. Um, uh, okay, cool, all right. 
Alrighty. So, you know, the first type of addiction or the first, one of the first reasons why we get addiction is from peer pressure. So sometimes it's just the fact that we've been hanging around the wrong people um, and we start to get our addiction starting to form, particularly in our younger formative years, like teenage years. So that's when, you know, cigarette smoking can begin. That's when alcohol drinking can begin. That's when, you know, smoking weed can begin uh, or taking drugs can begin. And so the peer pressure will actually um, lock you in a certain paradigm that you think that the only way to be cool or the only way to fit in or what becomes normal is to actually take on that substance. Now, unfortunately, when you are influenced by peer pressure, it indicates that that is a time when you actually haven't formed your own individuality, where you haven't formed your own opinions enough, where you haven't formed your own self-esteem enough. And so you're looking for your own uh, self-esteem or recognition from your outside group. So if your outside group is kind of drinking, smoking, taking weed, whatever that is, you're going to fall into that trap. And what can happen before you know it is that you've developed an addiction uh, and you're still doing the same things five years, 10 years later on, even if you know that group of peer, peer pressure that you used to hang around has fallen away from you and you're no longer friends with them, that those patterns can continue. So peer pressure is a really interesting thing. And I read this really powerful um, powerful quote uh, once that was, it said, you are the sum of the five people that you hang around. So, um, you know, that's why you want to be hanging around some really cool people who are like, you know, high mindset, high vibe, um, you know, looking to, to constantly transform their lives so that you kind of pick on that, pick up their vibe and you're able to move forward. So if you've had an addiction that kind of formed uh, from peer pressure, I'd be like going back and, and going back in time and looking like, who were those people that I was hanging around with? What were their thoughts? What were they viewing life? What were they thinking about life? Um, how was how did I get locked into that paradigm? Why did I choose to get locked into that paradigm? And so um, then that can help you to kind of unlock it and unravel it from there. Um, I know when I was growing up uh, in Australia, uh, you know, smoking was really common. It'd be really cool to go smoke down at the banana patch. It'd be really cool to go smoke at the bike shed. Uh, be really cool. I mean, at 14, at 14, my God, we were saving up money, getting the older boys to go buy us alcohol and go drinking, you know, quite a lot when we were 14, 15, 16. Um, and I know some of, of the girls, they, they continue that pattern on and, you know, um, some of us didn't. But it, it's, it's interesting to see, you know, the, the coolness around addictions, you know, at, at that at that stage it's cool to smoke it's cool to drink it's cool to be weird you're in the in crowd in crowd if you can do those things and so um there's a lot of how can i say it there's a lot of uh reasons why i think i think the key here is to recognize why were you allowing your sense of self to be influenced by others, you know, and uh, you, you want to unlock it from there. So, um, yeah, so peer pressure is definitely the first one. Um, the second reason is um, escape. Some people use addictions to escape. So they can't cope with what's going on in life. You know, um, I can't cope with uh, my work. I need to escape it. So let me go uh, and drink. I can't cope with my wife who's just constantly nagging me. I need to go smoke some weed just to kind of disconnect from them. I can't cope with this reality. It's too damn boring. Let me go take some ecstasy, some class A drugs or something like that to go and escape. Uh, or it could be things like I can't cope with the fact that my life is a real disappointment. I feel like I'm, you know, I'm bored. My life just isn't moving. Let me go have some sugar because sugar acts as like a little reward and a little kind of pick me up in the day. So sometimes we take on our, um, our, our addictions to actually escape reality. Um, and so, you know, the questions you have to ask yourself is what reality are you trying to escape? What parts of your life aren't you happy with? What parts of your uh, existence do you feel like you can't change? Um, and in that, uh, if you if you feel like you can't change it, why, you know, and then you're substituting the fact that your life is, you know, not moving with, with your, your addiction. You really need to be looking at that because the reality is that you can shift change and, you know, uh, recreate ev every aspect of your life. And if you know, if you're after, if you're someone who wants like, 
who gets bored with this reality because you know this 3d reality can be really boring you know i really highly recommend that you start learning some healing techniques and learning to open up your mind and let your mind take you to other dimensions other places that maybe um you know psychedelics would have taken you you know you can get to these states of all the addictions that you have naturally if, with your own body and i think that's really important that we don't try and use um which kind of brings us into the next part we use addictions um and and substances to self-medicate um and and self-medication uh, is quite a, quite a really big thing so self-medicating could be um you trying to uh take yourself uh to rebalance your uh, neurochemistry in your brain um self-medication could be the fact that you're trying to regulate your your emotions and regulate your mood so sometimes people will choose to take like alcohol to increase their dopamine levels they'll choose to take ecstasy to increase their serotonin levels um you opium opioids uh, over-the-counter uh, um, painkillers and things like that are really big um, really big problems these days people get addicted to like uh, over-the-counter medication um, because they're all self-medicating maybe you're self-medicating from the deep pain that you're feeling inside maybe you're self-medicating because you can't deal with the anger that keeps surfacing up inside of you and the only way you can kind of suppress the anger is by you know drinking and, and things like that so you know people tend to take drugs I knew this one guy um, he was undiagnosed with ADHD and so he used to take speed right which is an amphetamine and then got addicted to amphetamine because it made him feel normal and interestingly the same thing that they use in Retlin is amphetamines you know so he was self-medicating with with speed to make him feel normal so sometimes some of us are self-medicating with substances just to make us feel normal because our internal chemistry is out of balance you know our internal uh, brain chemistry is out of balance and so people will start to to look for drugs externally to put them back into balance even on the most simplest terms sometimes our adrenal glands are so fatigued and so stressed out that we end up taking coffee to kind of like rebalance our energy levels and get our energy levels back up again Again. Um, sometimes you know we get we our sugar levels can be out of balance you know our insulin levels are going up and down all the time we get a plateau we take some more sugar we feel normal again and great again everything's great our sugar levels plateau again and then we're self medicating with sugar again to get us back up onto that you know onto that higher level so are you self medicating are you self medicating with coffee with sugar with cigarettes with alcohol um, with with over-the-counter painkillers just to keep balance and normality inside your body and if you're trying to keep balance and normality inside your body, then that is really indicating that there's some deeper healing work that needs to be done. Because anyone that's trying to self-medicate, uh, there is usually a, a, a deeper reason, deeper trauma, deeper pain, um, different, uh, deeper issues that are lying inside that are making you self-medicate. So if you are using any of these substances to self-medicate, you need to start healing some stuff inside of you to create the balance without the external uh, medication, okay? Basically, right, okay, to answer that question, the question is, how can we learn to recognize when our body, which I consider to be wise, is actually asking for something that it needs versus an addiction? Okay, it's really simple. The body is wise, right? And it might start to crave chocolate, okay? Now, chocolate uh, could be the fact that you might be needing more calcium. It could be the fact that you might be needing more magnesium, more serotonin. So when your body craves something, it's actually wanting to crave nutrients, okay? So if you're craving a lot of dairy food, you know, maybe you're after the, the calcium in it. If you're craving a lot of meat, okay, maybe you're after the, the, the protein or the iron inside of it. So what you want to be looking at is what are the nutrients is that my body's craving, okay? Now, if you eat enough chocolate or enough whatever, I don't know, spinach, maybe you have a craving for spinach, eventually when your iron levels or that nutrient level gets high enough in the body, the body will stop craving it naturally, okay? And that's how you know whether it's something your body needs or whether it's an addiction. And if you recognize that, hey, I'm after magnesium, 
I don't need to get magnesium out of chocolate or I don't need to get magnesium serotonin out of chocolate. I can get that from bananas. I can get that from almonds. I can get that from, you know, other things. So the body actually functions better on variety than it does on singular things. So if you are craving things, I'd be going like, okay, what are the nutrients in this thing that my body's after? And where, what are the other things? Uh, sources where I can get those nutrients and then you want to make it a variety um, and then your body will balance really really quickly so that that's how I would I would discern that question okay good um, and let's answer that question how much is too much I think you you've got to it's a big question such an individual question okay so I think a cup of coffee is fine a day all right but if you're having 10 cups of coffee a day then that's not that's not fine. Do you know, if you're having one or two teaspoons of sugar a day and your body's somehow processing it, great. Uh, if you're having 20, you know, teaspoons of sugar, uh, then that's not great. So I would say, let, let's stick to this rule. If it's more than three times a day of anything, okay, maybe that's not good if we're talking about alcohol and, and ecstasy and tablets. What's, hang on, let me find a better answer for you. Okay, so the idea is, is that your body should have balance without sugar, coffee, tea, or any of those things, okay? If you can create balance in your body without these addictive substances, then you're doing good. And if you have a cup of coffee, then you're gonna be fine. If you have a glass of wine, then you're gonna be fine. It's when you become out of balance and you're using these substances to create balance, to make your mood stabilized, to make your brain chemistry stabilized, to make you feel normal, then you know that's too much, okay? So you're gonna to have to work that out. Um, you know, work, work that out, what, what's the truth for that is for you. Because ultimately, people, we shouldn't be addicted to anything you know we should be able to um, have variety in our lives be able to have a little bit of this a little bit of that and keep moving forward without needing any of those things to to prop us up in life or to make us move forward or to make us feel joyful or happy does that make sense i think that's the best way um, balance is really really a key and i'm a big believer in trying everything i'm a big believer in variety i'm a big believer in you know i'm not someone that abstains or anything like that i'm not like a puritan um but i i I maintain purity and Puritan diets and all those kind of things. But if, you know, if I want to have a glass of wine or champagne or whatever, th then I do, you know, I, I think that's okay to have I don't, or a piece of cake or whatever it is, or a cup of coffee. Cause you know, I'm not using it to rebalance my body. I'm just using it as an experience of life for that moment. And it's very contained. Okay. So we've gone through peer pressure. We've gone through escape. We've gone through self medication. So number four is the emotional regulator. Okay. Are you using these substances to regulate your emotion? Are you using them to make you feel good? Are you using them to get a short-term uh, happiness? Are you using them to kind of rebalance your anger? Are you reusing? Are you using these substances um, to, to to let go of your fear and your worries? Are you using these substances to um, you know move you out of bad moods and things like that? So sometimes people, you know, particularly this is what addictions do. Once they start to create a physical dependency right okay so you've got an addiction it's going to create a physical dependency which means that your body's going to start to uh, physically need it to create balance okay you and so when when the substance gets low in your body your mood will start to change okay obviously first the neural chemistry will start to change then your mood will start to change right then you'll get really angry and pissed off and then you'll have the substance right to rebalance the chemistry to rebalance the addiction so that everything can become normal again so you know if your mood is going out of alignment and then you're needing the substance to put you back into alignment then that's really indicating that this this is an addiction uh, right there so you know just have a think about it what is your addiction what moods does it create within you what negative moods does it create within you so that you can have the uh, the substance to put you back into balance you know things like sugar is going to really indicate um, 
defeat energy, unworthiness energy, right? Because sugar is one of the very is one of the substances which brings the energy of reward. So it's going to give you the sense of, oh, I'm rewarded. Oh, I'm I'm congratulated. Oh, it's a little party happening right here, you know? So you've got to look at the 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 the, the moods that, that 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 substance creates within you. And then I would be looking at to untangle it. How can I create those those mood changes or that happiness or that joy or that sense of fulfillment without the substance you needing the substance um, to to, um, to to take me there okay um, uh, cigarettes really fascinating cigarettes um, so what can happen um, with cigarettes is that people can use one substance to, to deal with many moods so I, I, I love watching cigarette smokers especially when they're out on their break you know so um, you know they'll be there smoking and some of them are like smoking just to have a break and you can feel them like this is the way I'm going to get a break in life is just to have a cigarette some of them are smoking and, and you can see that their brains getting creative and thinking about things so even just a cigarette can make the brain switch into being more creative um, sometimes you can see them smoking and they're fuming about things you know there's things that they're really pissed off about and they're having a cigarette just to kind of like you know work things out so sometimes people use cigarettes it's really interesting to help counsel themselves so next time you go see a bunch of smokers smoking go feel into their energy and work out how they're counseling themselves with the cigarette okay it's really really fascinating um, and I often see when I've seen people come into therapy and they've been uh, a cigarette smoker and this is true for any addiction on some level is that they create a sub personality inside of them the personality which smokes and then there's their personality and so therefore the, the cigarette or the addiction then becomes their friend because they get this this second energy that they go and they go and tap into and, and they come back to it's really fascinating um, uh, yeah so emotional regulators Uh, so number five is habit okay so sometimes we just get caught in the habit we're creatures of habit people um, and we get caught in this like loop sometimes like you know we get up we we have our cigarette we you know we get or after dinner we have a cigarette after dinner we have a glass of wine or after every meal we have to have a bit of sugar or on the weekend I like to take ecstasy every weekend or you know we get into these little habits when we get into habits um, it just it, habits are really interesting they keep you stuck in time like you get caught in this loop you know you're doing the same thing 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 and it actually keeps your emotions locked in a certain uh, zone and also keeps your mind and your spirit locked in a certain time zone okay so you can't get out of it and then you're wondering why your life's not progressing because you've got this habit this addiction which is actually just holding you back and holding you in time so you know if you've got a ha habit okay it's like when did the habit begin what was going on inside your life that you were so avoiding or needing to escape or whatever that you needed to create that habit? Have a look at the energy inside of it and, and unlock it. Um, and sometimes with habits, we really need to kind of slowly unlock them because if you go cold turkey, and this is why cold turkey doesn't work, is because the, the body, everything goes into like, oh, I can't cope, I can't cope because I've got the habit, I've got to do this thing, I've got to do this thing in order to survive because that's what a habit becomes. Yeah, absolutely, Emma, Groundhog Day. Um, you, you use the habit it becomes your survival you know and so when you don't have it anymore it's like ah, I don't know what to do I'm gonna die I'm gonna die and you freak out have all these crazy emotions and your brain chemistry goes off so you, sometimes you have to break the habit so if you're having 10 cigarettes a day try eight and cope with that then try seven then try six and wean yourself off until you find new ways to fulfill your life new things to fulfill your life with okay so um, you know that's super 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 important um, so then, then you 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 overtaking the habit with new behavior. You're overtaking the habit with new emotions, and then that habit's just going to gently, gently fall away. I'll tell you this really quick story, right? Okay. So um, my husband's grandmother started died, right? And um, she was a heavy smoker, and then my husband started smoking after her death. And I was like, okay, people deal with grief in many different ways. I was like, fine, smoke, it's fine, you know, but. A month passed, two months passed, three months but he's still smoking and I'm like hang on a minute I didn't marry a smoker and I don't like being with a smoker so what's going on here right because I you know had some talks with him still wasn't making any progress and he's really good at like shifting you know and I went and had a look 
And who was there smoking with him, right? It was the dead grandmother who had addiction to cigarettes that kind of, um, you know, was smoking through her, through him. So she, he, she was still enjoying the cigarette through him and making him smoke. So I had to go in and do some work and help send her off so that she wasn't enjoying the cigarette through him, which beautifully brings us on to the next topic of entities. So sometimes people's addictions can get locked into place because entities exist. So entities could be spirits that are passed over that are still trying to fulfill their addiction through the other person, okay? If you see drug addicts on the street, particularly like heroin addicts and ones that you know use a lot of heavy drugs, you might see up to four or five or six entities stuck on them, which is making them, ha sucking off them and using their physical addiction so that they can keep their addiction going, okay? Really Really, really fascinating I've seen entities in pubs right so old men entities obviously old drinkers and you know you'd go in and you'd see them and they they just jump onto somebody like an alcoholic and then they just go with them do you know because they were still getting the, the drink that way so you know sometimes the the addiction is bigger than you so you know that's what we need to have a look at and you know um, shift that out as well okay and and in in the case of when I was talking about habits and cigarettes people can create their own entity energy around the addiction. The actual substance can create an entity energy that cocoons the person in the addiction itself. So those things you need to be looking out for as well and unlocking it. Otherwise you can just feel like you're kind of trapped and cocooned uh, in your addiction and, and there's no way out. Um, but usually that would be an indicator that there might be an entity on top, okay? And the last thing which brings us to is genetic, okay? So sometimes addictions can travel down through the family. Alcoholism is a very common trait that travels down through the family, okay? So grandfather was alcoholic, grandmother was alcoholic. It just passes down through the family line. So it's like this genetic energy that, that travels through. Um, and it can be really big, just like a genetic illness, an inherited illness, you know, like breast cancer that keeps traveling down through the family. Likewise, addiction energy can also travel down through the, uh, the family. So you want to be going in and checking out the DNA and stuff like that to help unlock it. So that's it in a nutshell. So our addictions can be really intense. So, and, and usually, right, addictions are a collection of all these things. They're a collection of peer pressure and the need to escape and self-medication and emotional regulators. You know, they're, they're a habit. There can be genetic stuff, entities all twisted in it. And then you're wondering why you can't let go of your addiction because it's so weaved into so much stuff that you're not going to get your, your, own, your own space to, to, to try and move through it. And, you know, the, the key here here is really to learn to stabilize in the vibration of love because you know we we often use a lot of substitutes in our life because we don't know how to generate our own love we don't know how to stabilize love inside of us and once we learn to generate and stabilize the love vibration inside of us um, that's when you know you will be able to have the space to be able to go ah that's not my thought that's a genetic thought you know, when you're able to hold love inside of you, you get yourself the space, you know, to, to recognize, oh, look, I'm now rising up with anger. Okay, now I can find other ways to kind of deal with my anger. When you have love inside your body, you have the space to, to create more serotonin. You know, you have the space to have, to choose a different thought. You have the space to go, hey, I don't need to have that piece of sugar after chocolate. I'm gonna go do something else, okay? So having love inside of us actually just gives us more space. And that's why for me, love's a path towards enlightenment because, you know, in order for us to have that space, that stillness, that zen, in order for us to, to move out of a 3D consciousness into 5D, 7D, whatever you want to call it, we need to be vibrating and generating more and more and more in love so that we can actually expand our awareness, expand our consciousness so that we then have the space. And when we have more space, we have more power over things. You know, if then our true energy can come over and go, hey, I'm going to have this thought. Hey, I'm going to have this feeling. Hey, I'm going to do something differently. And so that's why it's so important to stabilize and generate the love vibration um, you know in in that in that as well so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you on a 
energy clearing guided meditation. I'm going to use it, we're going to use it to um, focus on a addiction. You might have more than one addiction. Uh, let's do it for one addiction. <laughs> let's keep it as simple as we can. So you're going to focus on that one addiction. Um, and then, you know, you can always come back and listen to this again if you've got a second addiction uh, as well. Okay. Alrighty, let's go for it. So this is all about you getting more space inside of you. This is all about you connecting to more love inside of you so that you can have more space to kind of deal with these addictions, okay? So I'm gonna start by sending you a lot of love and a lot of light into your body. I'm just gonna feel all the cells in your body lighting up with light. <sighs> okay. Good. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to release the entity of the addiction, okay? So whatever the addiction is, whether it's sugar, coffee, you know, drugs, alcohol, you're just going to allow the energy of that addiction to release, okay? Sometimes it has its own energy, its own, yeah, its own spirit energy. Let it go. Let it all come out of you. You might feel it releasing from your liver. You might feel it releasing from your pancreas. You might feel it releasing from your heart, your head, your stomach, but you're going to let this substance release from you now. And we're going to ask for any other entities that may be hopping along for the ride to enjoy the addiction with you. We're going to ask for those entities to release now as well. So just allowing light to come in. You can watch them unhook. We can cut some cords. And I want to teach you who you are without the addiction. Can I teach you, can we teach you, the divine light teach you what your mind is like without your addiction? Can we teach you what your heart is like without your addiction? Can we teach you what your body is like without your addiction? And can we teach you what your life is like without your addiction? Can we teach you who you are without your addiction and what your identity is without your addiction? And I would like you just to unlock, unravel the addiction from you. So just feel, really feel that which the addiction has created within you, those emotions, those thoughts, those feelings, those parts of your life, the choices that you've made in your life. I want you to feel your soul unlocking, unraveling the addiction from your being, okay? So I literally feel your soul getting brighter and it's just choosing to push the addiction out of your mind, out of your heart, out of your life. Just let it go. I want you to feel your soul pushing your addiction out of your base chakra, pushing your addiction out of your sacral chakra, your solar plexus, pushing your addiction out of your heart chakra, your throat chakra, your third eye and crown chakra, letting it all go. For some of you, there's a lot of suppressed anger and that's what the addiction is doing, is actually suppressing a lot of emotion inside that you're maybe too scared to face. So can we now release from you all the emotion that you've been suppressing inside, all the anger, all the rage, all the disappointment, all the hurt, all the confusion, all those feelings that you've just hidden, buried underneath your addictions, you're gonna let it release. Oh, you guys have got a lot there. Let it all go. I just feel your body opening up like a volcano. You're just going to let it explode. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Some of you guys also have a lot of self-hatred and self-criticism because of the addiction. So can we let that go? Let it go, let all that part of you that was created, or the part of you that's been negatively, you know, against yourself because of those patterns, let that self-criticism, that anger go. All that self-disgust. Okay, I'm going to now go into your DNA. So if you've got any ancestral energy that's created the addiction, any genetic information, any DNA information that's 
uh, created the addiction. Sometimes the addiction can actually shift and change your DNA, okay, so that the addiction stays there. So can we go through your DNA and just send light through it and ask for any DNA that codes the addiction in to release? So light popping around your body, pop, 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 pop. I don't even want to call it your addiction anymore. So let's now step you out of your addiction. I want you to just visualize yourself taking off this cloak, which represented your addiction. I just want you to take it off and just let it dissolve into the past. And let's teach you who you are now. Can we return your mind now to perfect health? So letting light come in and rebalance your neural chemistry. Oh, there's a lot of neural chemistry there that needs to be rebalanced. So just sending another wave of light into your brain to rebalance the neural chemistry there. Regulate the serotonin levels, dopamine levels, let them all kind of rebalance. It's really weird. I feel your ears opening up for some reason. So let your ears open up. Whew, that feels better. Can we now send light into your heart so that you no longer so, and rebalance your emotions? Okay, so let's let all those emotions rebalance to come back to normality. So you might feel, you, I actually feel your heart chakra was spinning in the wrong direction because of, you know, the, the emotions going out of balance. So now let your, your, your heart start to spin in the opposite direction and let's allow your heart chakra to renormalize and what it feels like to have balanced emotions. Can we teach you what it feels like to be able to balance your emotions that you have? Because the reality is, is you're going to go on an emotional roller coaster anyway throughout the day. Sometimes you might feel angry or sad or whatever. It's life, man. <laughs> but can we be able to just regulate your emotions? Just to create balance. Can we teach you what it feels like to have balanced emotions inside? And what it feels like that you have all the wisdom and knowledge and power to regulate your emotions? And you know, every time my balance, my emotions go out of balance, I'm like, wow, okay, what do I need to learn from this? What do I need to learn from this anger? What is this unworthiness teaching me? You know, just take the extra time, the extra moment to kind of reflect upon the emotions that you're having. So can we teach you how to reflect upon the emotions that you're having? And rebalance them and learn from them? Okay, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Can we now rebalance your body's function and teach you what it feels like for your body to function without the addiction? Not that you have it anymore, but what your body is now. So I really want to just put your body back into balance, put your liver energy back into balance, your stomach, your adrenals, your hormones. Let's rebalance your whole physical body. Let's bring it back to normality. So I feel your mind, your heart, your body, and your soul realigning back to a normal space. Can we now unlock your life from the habit, okay? Just let your life unlock from all the things that you did to, to, to you know, ensure your habit existed. So there might have been choices of going to certain shops or meeting with certain people or whatever the story is. You're just going to let your life unlock from that. And I just feel some people falling away from your life. Um, maybe going to certain places, falling away. So I just feel your life really clearing out.
Beautiful. Wow. I just feel like this flood of fresh energy coming into your life. So I want you to feel a flood of fresh energy coming into your life, a flood of fresh energy coming into your mind, a flood of fresh energy coming into your heart, a flood of fresh energy coming into your body, a flood of fresh energy coming into all your organs, into your hormones, into your neural pathways, a flood of fresh energy coming into your soul. And let's just allow you to welcome new life. You've got so much more space now to create new life, so much more space now to experience new life. You've got so much more time now to experience new life. So just let this flood of new energy come into you. You know, you might get more creative ideas, more inspiring thoughts. You might decide you need to go and, I don't know, climb Mount Everest or something because you've got this flood of energy, this flood of newness. Can we teach you now what it feels like to welcome new life into you? What it feels like to welcome new life into your thoughts and into your heart? Can we teach you what it feels like to have new new ideas? Can we? T it's, it's almost like, you know, when you let go of this stuff, it's like you're moving out of a studio flat and you're moving into like a five bedroom house, okay? This is what the change is after you let go of habits. So can we teach you what it feels like to really open up to experience more life now? What it feels like to expand so that new life can come your way, new opportunities, new synchronicities. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. So like, like your body's just like got this new fresh energy, you know, traveling through it. Can we now teach you what it feels like to, that it's safe to create new life, that it's safe to move forward now? And let's unlock any habits that you have, any old habits, let them all release now. If you know what they are, that's ready to go. And I just also feel like this very low vibration is ready to release from you. You know, the low vibration of that past habit that kept you kind of locked in certain ways. So you're going to just feel this very low vibrational energy releasing from you. Because it's time, beautiful people, to move up a notch. So let's teach you what it feels like to move up a notch on your vibrationary scale. Or maybe you move up 10 notches, 20 notches, 100 notches, because it's the freedom that you're now going to experience. Can we teach you that it's safe to experience freedom, that it's safe to experience newness in your life? I just feel all your neural pathways unlocking, like just unlocking from being like imprisoned in that habit and now unlocking to like, you know, just welcome new ideas and thoughts to come into you. Can we teach you what it feels like to master your life, master your mind, master your emotions, master your habits? Can we teach you what it feels like to, to master your reality now? And that it's safe to master your reality. You don't need to hide it or shy from it or be trapped in the past and all that stuff, you know, that you can now just step into your power and master your life. Can we teach you you no longer need to hold yourself back now? Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Can we teach you now how to generate your own source of love inside? So I just like you to welcome your, your being to just start vibrating with love. Because you are love, you come from love, you are a divine source of love. And just let that beautiful light, you might see it as pink light, bright light, whatever you see it as, just let it start to fill up your heart chakra. You know, you've got an infinite source of love inside of you, you know. Can we just help you to unleash that infinite source of love inside of you let it unleash in your mind let it unleash in your body let it unleash in your cells and i just want you to feel the love inside of you just pushing through your mind pushing through your body pushing your aura out your energy field out and let's teach you what it feels like to feel love and to feel love bringing you space Let's teach you what it feels like to generate love and to generate space in your mind with love. Can we teach you how to generate love and generate space in your emotions? 
we teach you how to generate love and generate space in your actions so that you just have that little bit of extra time to work out a new way to be, that little bit of extra time to think of a new way to, to think or that little bit of extra time to, to readjust your emotions so that you can re-enter back into this world in a completely new way. So just giving yourself all the space in the world. Can we teach you what it feels like to feel stable in love? Oh, I just feel your heart chakra really opening up now. Can we teach you what it feels like to feel stable in your heart? And stable in your life. And it's really interesting because, you know, being when I saw stable in love, stable in your life, I kind of went into your auric field. And a lot of you guys come from really chaotic pasts, chaotic families, chaotic situations, chaotic relationships, chaotic choices, or that created chaos from the choices you made. Can we just release the chaos that you come from so that you don't have to keep repeating it? So I'm just going on to the other side of your energy field in your life. And some of you just keep perpetuating chaos and challenges in your life. And I want to send a light into that and just shift all that around. Let's not repeat those patterns anymore. Because addiction energy loves chaos. You know, it's all part of, it's all part of the drama, you know. So can we teach you what it feels like to have a drama-free life? And even if there are challenges, because that's what life's about, life's full of challenges, that you've got the space, you've got the love, you've got the wisdom, the intelligence, the solutions, the inspiration, the guidance to deal with whatever challenge comes your way. Can we teach you what it feels like to create peace in your life and what it feels like to find peace in your life? Can we teach you what it feels like to create love in your life and to be able to find love in your life? Can we teach you what it feels like to love yourself so, so deeply? Because ultimately a lot of addiction patterns come from the inability to love thyself, you know? It's just an extension of not being able to love yourself. So can we teach you now that you love yourself and that you can care for yourself immaculately now? that you can be kind to yourself and encourage yourself and that you can choose things in your life that celebrate you, that you can choose things in your life that honor you and you can choose things in your life that raise you to a higher experience of life. Can we also teach you how to choose things in your life that can transform you to be the best version of you? and that you can choose new life to celebrate you. Yeah, it's all about you choosing life that celebrates you, you choosing life that supports you, you making the choice to choose life that honors you. And so just for a moment, I want you to turn your attention to beyond your aura and just feel the beautiful vibration of love that exists through this universe, through your life. And I just want you to receive it, receive that beautiful universal energy of love coming in to celebrate you, to honor you, to raise you, to encourage you. Just feel that love, just receive it, receive it, receive it, and just fill your being up with love. So all those empty parts inside of you, I just want you to receive love and fill yourself up with love. Just receive and fill, receive and be nurtured by love, receive and be nourished by love. Receive and be enlivened by love. Receive and feel satisfied by love. Just receive, 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 receive into every single cell in your body. Into all the I still feel like some of you guys have got some empty pockets inside of you, like you might have an empty pocket inside your stomach. Okay, so just bring that love into that empty pocket. So if you've got an empty pocket inside your stomach, you might have an empty pocket inside your heart, in your mind. Just receive love into that area until it starts to get full. 
receive, receive, receive until that part of your body starts to glow. Because really, that's all, that's what every part of your body is after is just love. You know, that's what we're doing here, we're turning ourselves to love. That's the real substance that we're after. Just fill yourself up with love. Until you glow. And I just want you to glow with love now and smile, because smiling is really good. Just glow and smile with love. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So I'm just, wow, okay, you guys are sparkling now, okay? So I just want you to visualize yourself receiving love, glowing with love, and just walking forward in your life, walking forward into new territory, walking forward into a new life, walking forward and embracing new new actions, new activities, embracing new foods, embracing, you know, just embracing newness. Just embracing newness. You don't have to be stuck in the past anymore. Stuck in habits, you're just embracing newness. Walk forward and embrace newness. Let every part of you receive newness, experience newness. It's safe. You can make the right choices in your life now. Walk forward and receive. Walk forward and experience newness. And for some reason, I just feel like there's so much light. You're walking into so much light. I want you to just give yourself a bath and a shower with all that light. Just wash yourself clean, reset yourself. Beautiful, wash yourself clean, take a few deep breaths. Wash your head, your body everywhere, deep breaths, breathing in the light, completely renewed, completely rejuvenated, completely refreshed, completely reset. Okay, good, good, that's it. You can open your eyes. <laughs> Amazing, good. Not as heavy as I thought, much brighter. You guys are ready to shift that stuff. You know, it's all about, you know, creating new life. That's what it's all about. Just creating new life, making new choices, welcoming new activities, welcoming more life into you. Just welcome more life. Don't hold yourself back anymore. Just welcome more life. If you get inspired to go do horse riding, go do horse riding. If you get inspired to go sit in a different cafe, go sit in a different cafe. If you get inspired to go skiing, go do it. Just go and live life. Listen to different music. Put on different clothes. Change the round, the furniture in your room. Just create new life in whichever way you can, okay? Dye your hair pink. It doesn't matter. Create new life in every, every aspect of your life. You know, you don't need to be stuck, trapped in that kind of old pattern, that old world anymore. Just open yourself up and experience new life and you will step out of your addictions. That's all you need to do. <laughs>